So today I decided to um, talk a little bit about this tool that's called Stackbit uh, that I'm particularly very excited about. Um, I've been playing with them for a little bit uh, and I've been in contact with um, the developer advocate and the co-founder, and then they are um, continuously working on making this tool better and adding features and that. So I'm always like keeping an eye on it, and they are really, really making a cool tool. So I wanted to, you know, uh, share it with you, so so you also know what it what it's about. Um, but first, like I'm going to tell you a little bit about who I am. I'm Floor. I'm a full stack software engineer at ZipWhip. Uh, and I also run the Jamstack Seattle meetup. I've been on sort of like a break because I've been moving and a lot of has been going on in my life. And so I just wanted to say that we are looking for organizers to help us, you know, drive the Seattle meetup effort. And we're also always looking for, you know, speakers and talks. So if you if you have a talk or if you know someone that has a talk. We'd be super happy to, you know, get you on board with that and organize that. We are starting to plan the next event, which apparently is going to be in October. So um, keep keep an eye on that. You know, I know that you guys are uh, the Boston meetup, but now that everything is virtual, you know, <laughs> we can mix and match, and we can all share and be everywhere, right? So that, that's super cool. And that's Bilbo. That's uh, my little like companion here. He's like sleeping right next to me always, and he's Bilbo like the Hobbit. So I I always like like to showcase him because when he wakes up from his nap, he you will see him walking here right in front of my face. So <laughs> that's Bilbo. Okay. So the goal for today is gonna. It's going to be to get you curious about this exciting and powerful Jamstack tool that I'm going to be talking. So it's, you know, the idea is just to uh, have a, a short and sweet demo to get this tool on your radar and uh, to get you to look more into it. And so, so the agenda, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to tell you what Stackbit is about. So it's going to be sort of Stackbit in a nutshell. And I'm going to show you three ways of creating a Stackbit site and what those are all about. And so uh, hopefully with that, you'll understand like what Stackbit stack uh, brings you know, on the table uh, for the Jamstack community. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how live editing works in Stackbit, which is uh, super exciting and I think like sort of like the missing piece in the Jamstack. So it's, it's going to be super cool to see. And then I'm gonna, they, they have other features. So I'm gonna sort of like list them so you have them on, on your mind when you research more about them. So Stackbit in a nutshell. So Stackbit is a tool that was born from this idea of uh, having an easy way to maintain Jamstack sites. And that's sort of like the, the, the key word for them, like maintain Jamstack sites. Cause you know, uh, we are always you know, talking about creating Jamstack sites and, and mixing and matching tools. But then the question is like, how do we maintain these tools? And how do we onboard more people to come on board you know, and maintain them and, and being them you know, technical and also non-technical people? And so what they brought into the table uh, is a live editor for the Jamstack website. And I'm gonna show you how that looks in a moment. But the, as I was saying, that the the one of the their main concepts is like bringing together technical and non-technical people because you know one of the the main things about the Jamstack is this flexibility that, that we have of you know using tools uh, like you know mixing and matching different tools and having and that that same flexibility gives us complexity, right? And then we end up with so many tools like spread all over the place. And I feel that that handoff to, you know, the client or whoever is going to be the final, uh, you know, person that maintains the website can become really complicated when you have like a list of things that they're going to need to be, you know, logging into and maintaining. And not to mention that it can be people that are, you know, marketers or, you know, uh, people that are not necessarily technical. So, um, it's, it, that's one of the main things for them. Sorry about the noise also. <laughs> is it, is it too loud? No, I think it's good. Okay, cool. All right. 
Um, and so the, again, like sort of like their, in, their important things is this live editing and the live preview. So you're gonna be able to see how your site looks and edit right there. The site and be like under the hood, what's going to be happening is that it's gonna Stackby provides this um, bi-directional synchronization with the content source, whether it's Git based or headless DMS based. So what's going to happen once you have a, a big site, your site like connected on Stackbit is that like under the hood, it's just going to uh, update the content source, whatever it is. So like at the end of the day, you own the content and Stackbit is just a visual layer in between. So it's like, it's something that's gonna be put like in between your content source and your repo. And it's gonna be in the middle, like giving you that, that visual tool to let you edit like uh, like visually. So that's like, like mostly it. And I think that it's very important because if you think about, you know, uh, like people coming into this new stack, you know, there's like so many things going on. And like, I think about, you know, most of the people that use a monolithic approach such as WordPress or something along those lines that they have everything in one place. So they log it into the dashboard and they have everything there. So uh, like, how, how do we, you know, convince, convince them to kind of get them on board into the Jamstack and, you know, not lose this possibility of, you know, live editing and having everything in one place. And so I think that this is like the, 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 the sort of like hole that Stackbit comes to fill. Uh, and then it really takes care of bringing together the tech tools behind your Jamstack side. So no matter what those are, so you're gonna see that it connects uh, your CI CD uh, and then it connects your content source and it gives you everything in one place. So you can maintain everything just from one place, which is very important. And so three ways of creating a stack based site that I want to, sh to share with you. And the three ways are, so you can use the supported themes. So they have um, a catalog of more than 15 supported themes. And it doesn't mean that it's just only those, They they there are more, those are the, 15 plus that they support and then they take care of, you know, maintaining and adding features to and whatnot. We're gonna keep talking about that in a moment, but that's sort of like the idea. You can also use a theme from a repo, sort of like importing a theme that you or someone else have made, in, like using that as a like importing point. So it's gonna be forking that sort of like theme into an account and you go from there. But you can also, and this is very interesting, you can import your existing site into Stackbit, doing some configurations for you know letting it uh, know how your site uh, content works and whatever. So you configure, so you can configure it, and you can import your existing site into Stackbit. So the first one that I want to show you is using a supported theme. So I'm going to open up a new tab here. And do you guys still see my screen? Yep. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Nice. So this is a uh, Stackbit uh, homepage, and you can access um, this part that I'm going to access from different places. But I'm just going to go the simplest one. So you go into their um, homepage and go get started. And so that's going to take you to their like create a project um, sort of uh, flow. And it's gonna, so you're gonna see that they offer you this uh, supported themes that I was already uh, mentioning. And it's really like they, there are 15 plus, uh, but they, like if you are looking for something to getting, you know, up and running with the Jamstack real quick, real quick, which is something that I had to do personally for a project. I needed a website in literally less than a few hours. So I came here and I just picked one of this. And I, I promise you that each one of these has enough flexibility for you to make it work as you want. So um, just keep that in mind if you know if sometimes you have something that you need to solve, Stagmit is a great um, you know solution for that. And then uh, it's interesting because once you create a theme, like a website from a theme, 
it clones the thing into your repo. So you can always update it and maintain it and make changes to it. So it's this is sort of like a starting point for you. So keep that in mind. Um, but I wanted to quickly show you, uh, we're, we're gonna pick just any one of them. We might just go with event, let's say. And so I clicked on that and it, it's, it's interesting because it offers you some things. The first thing is gonna be that you're gonna you can call your project whatever you want, right? And this is going to be the name that it's going to be named in StackBit and the repo and everything. So that's going to be an important thing. This is the theme that we just selected from that list, and it can be any any other one. And then this is very interesting because it says static site generator, and it lets it still lets you change it because um, you can you can like mix and match and create a website from all these supported tools that they have. And it's, you know, Gatsby, Hugo, Jekyll, and Next. I'm just gonna leave Next here. And you can also, so that's one of the first decisions that you're gonna make. And then the, the second one is, you know, the, the, the CMS. So it can be uh, a Git-based approach as we were talking. So everything, all the content is gonna live in your repo and it's gonna be, you know, managed through commits and all that. Or you can also connect it to something like Contentful or Sanity or something like that. And so these are the tools that they um, offer, you know, out of the box that are already connected. But I think that with some, you know, configuration work, you can you could, you could make it work with any other one. And then uh, finally, it you know offers you uh, creating a, a repository on your um, account. If you don't have this already connected, it's going to ask you to connect it. I already I've already done it, so it's all set. It, it's interesting that it lets you set it as public or private, so you can go from there. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit uh, create site, so you guys can see what happens. And what happens is that it's uh, doing like all of the hard work for you. It's uh, um, creating the repo and it's and it's uh, configuring, you know, Netlify because it puts it up on Netlify, and it's configuring the the tools that I selected, Next.js, and everything that I selected. It's it's preparing everything for you. So this is actually great because it's like a lot of work that you know we are we are not doing as a developer we're we're not having that you know complexity and so it, it usually takes um you know uh, as it says here this usually takes less than 60 seconds and the work record is 32 seconds so it's actually pretty fast and then once it's done building it's going to show you uh the live editor and you're going to be able to see how you can edit it and how how it um how you can uh, maintain your website so i'm just gonna wait for it because i know that it's super super fast so i just hope that it's not you know a long time but <laughs> it's usually super super fast is there any questions so far that i can cover in the meantime sure i have a quick question so um, yeah. you were able to pick kind of like some of the repo information behind the scenes. I assume that you've connected this to your GitHub repository already, or is this something that you're going to, like, I assume you have to authorize it to, to have access to your GitHub repository. Great point. Yeah. You do have to authorize the StackBase app into your, um, you know, Git account, GitHub account. I've already done it, so it didn't ask me to. But if if it if uh, you know you're new to this, it's going to you know offer you to open that pop up, you know, authorize the, the app, and you're good to go from there. I've done it like I don't know how long, you know, time ago, and it's still good. So um, it's just one thing, a thing that you need to do only one time, and you're good to go. And the same thing with Netlify, like uh, this was put up on Netlify. And for me, I didn't do anything, but beforehand uh, I had to connect it with my Netlify account. And again, it's something that I did so long ago and I never had to do it again. But if for you, for the ones that are doing it for the first time, uh, it's gonna ask, ask you to do it just one time. If I open like, I'm gonna show you um, uh, how, you know, what that is in a moment, but um, I just opened the project settings and I wanted to show you what we have here. So we have the project name that we, we left at this unique KL thingy. Uh, it connected the thing to Netlify and it created the project on Netlify for me. 
and it created a GitHub repo for me called just the same as the as the um, as the site. And then we can see that we have the the SSG that we the one that we picked Next.js and the node version, and we have some other info. Like, let me go back to general here. And this is interesting also because this is the API keys that it, you know, provision already like automatically for me on the, on my GitHub account and everything. So it really, you know, does a lot of work for us under the hood so we can have this up and running super fast. And this is already up and running really. Uh, from here, um, I have a website and I can make any changes that I want. Uh, as I was saying, this is a this is one of the supported themes that they have. So they uh, really put in some work to you know give us tools to change you know colors, and you can obviously go change the logo. You can add pages. You can um, you know um, add menu items and whatever you might need. Um, I I want to show you a few things here. One of them is the one that they call um, inline editing. So um, I can click on there, and this is sort of like that visual editing um, like feature that they they really uh, like shine shine on with, and you can you can change this, uh, let's say title or like let's say hello, Jamstack Boston, right? Just to make it more fun, and so and you click there, and what's happening here is very interesting, and let me let me quickly, very quickly open again uh, the project settings. And I want to open the repo that it created for me so you can see what's really the magic behind all this. Because the first time that I saw it, I was like, this is so like auto magic. What's going on, right? So I, if, we, if you go into the repo, you're going to see that it just created a repo. This was just created for me in my, in my GitHub account. And it creates two branches for you. The master branch is the master is like production. It's uh, everything that's going to be, uh, you know, uh, live. And then they create this preview branch for you, which um, is whatever is where what changes we're doing here. It there are just changes that are automatically committed, like instantly for us in this preview branch. Like if we click on this, and if we go to commits here. You're gonna see that um, um, I updated the title in in sections, and but let me oh, let me do one more change just so we uh, change something else. And I'm gonna click on that, and this is a different. This is uh, also interesting. You have different um, types of fields that you can specify, and I'm gonna show you how that like uh, fields work behind, like under the hood in a moment. But let me change this, and we're gonna say someday. And we're gonna save it, and so it's sort of like processes. And if we come come back to the preview branch, and I'm gonna refresh real quick here, you're gonna see there's a new commit there. So the only thing that it does, it's like every time that you make a change here in this live preview, it creates a commit in this preview branch, and then um, so you can do all the changes that you need. Uh, let me, um, before I sort of like publish the changes, I'll show you uh, a few more things about this live editing experience. I don't want to spend a lot of time, but I want to show you the things that I like the most about it. And this is, as, I, as we were saying, one of this, their supported themes. So it has uh, things like uh, that you can drag and drop sections, like this hello section. You, and I don't know if you see, but there's like a drag uh, sort of icon there, and I can drag it be below another one, and it automatically updates for us. So you can really change the entire like landing page real quick and make it work for what you need. You can also add sections. You have um, sections that are uh, that have grid grids like this one, and you can change whatever you need. And let me go to start with theme. This is like the stack bit, the site configuration. So they usually let you change things about the entire um, layout. So for example, this is the full width one. Then you also have the option to go to the boxed one and then it updated real fast and it goes boxed like that. And depending on the theme, you're gonna have different um, things that you can change. You have styles, classic, bold, which usually sort of changes 
the font and some things uh, to make it a little bit different. You can obviously change the color and they have uh, pre-configured colors uh, that you can use. But again, these are all things that you could, you know, keep updating yourself. And so you can see just with a few clicks how I sort of like completely changed this landing page into something else. And so let's say that I'm, let me quickly refresh this so you can see I moved a few things around, a bunch of commits there. So it's just committing things to a preview branch. And so if I select to publish the thing uh, here, uh, the only thing that's going to happen is that they are going to actually merge this preview branch into the master branch. And that's so Netlify is going to pick it up and it's going to, you know, deploy to our to our site. So that's the automatic thing that's happening under the hood. And um, one more thing that I want to show you about this is that this is a live. So there are different editing experiences that you have. This is sort of the live editing or like editing in line directly with the visual thing. And you can also um, select code here where they're going to let you um, interact and, and really change the code. And you have um, two options for working with the, the code that's under the hood. You can develop locally, because remember that it, this is only a GitHub repo that it, you're hosting. So you can work and push and um, Stackbit is going to pick it up and it's going to reflect that. Or you can work directly with the, in, the interface that they provide for you and making changes right here. Uh, if you decide to develop locally, they, here are the instructions to do so. And you also have logs uh, of all the things that are happening that you can see there. And then you also have this interface that's called content model. And again, this is one of their um, supported themes. So it, it has like a lot of things, but these same things you could sort of replicate when you are importing your website into Stackbit and you know, make you know editable any sort of um, sections or fields that you have sort of following what they're doing here and their, their documentation. Uh, but this is uh, sort of like the configuration for all of the, the sections that you can edit, the data models and some, some information. I'm not gonna dive a lot into this. I just wanted to show you what it's all about. Um, and let me um, quickly go back to the presentation. So that's gonna be sort of like the picking, like creating a website uh, from using a supported theme. And then the second option that you have is using a theme from a repo, which is sort of similar. Like if we go, let me open a new tab and we're gonna again, go to the Stackbit home and I'm gonna hit get started again. And we're gonna see the same, um, the same themes that uh, we can we can pick from. And if you see all the way at the bottom, there's like the custom theme uh, option here. And so it just lets you provide a URL of a, of a theme that's prepared to work with Stackbit. And I'm gonna dive into that prepared to work with Stackbit in a moment, but this is just, you know, uh, one more option for you to, you know, import a custom thing. So I think that from here, you can, as a developer, go ahead and create a theme and make it a Stackbit theme, you know, and, and share it or, or you know, uh, have people use it. Um, and and that's, that's the idea about it. Or like find some that some other developer did that's not listed in the supported themes, but it's still a theme that, that works with Stackbit. So that's sort of like the second option. Once you once you import the the custom theme from here, it, you're gonna see sort of like something similar as we were seeing here. Um, only the things that you know the the person that the developer that created the theme will let you edit because uh, that's that's very customizable. And then that said, let's jump into like the importing your existing sites repo. And for that, and uh, for that, I'm gonna go into the Stackbit dashboard. So in the dashboard, you're gonna see a list of all the uh, websites that you created in Stackbit. And up here, you're gonna have um, you're gonna have two buttons. The new project one, I'm gonna quickly click on it on it, so you know this is what we've we've seen so far. 
And there's this import one as the second one, which uh, it's it's going to let you select a, 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 re uh, a repo from your GitHub account, and it's going to sort of try to import it into Stackbit. Um, so for example, I have one that I've created for this that's called Stackbit Blog Demo. And this is just um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit next so because it takes a, a minute or so, and I'm gonna show you what it actually is, so so you can understand how really simple it is. So um, we're gonna say select a base brand um, from which Stackbit will create the new preview branch, and that's gonna be main for me. So we're gonna hit next. It already uh, sort of picked up the 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 SSG could be that it's Gatsby in in my case because it's um, a Gatsby blog starter that I used, and we're using no version twelve. Looks good, all set, and uh, it's going to be Git based, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be storing the content in Git with commits. I'm not using any you know API based CMS in this case. So it looks good. If I needed to add environment variables, I can do that from here. And I'm gonna hit next. So it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna take me to deploying the site and it's gonna provision and do all though that same thing that we saw with the um, supported theme. So it's doing that for me. And uh, while it's doing that, I wanna show you, I wanna open the repo and I wanna show you. So this was really just uh, a, a project that I started from uh, this Gatsby starter. So I just did Gatsby new, um, I gave it a different name, but from this starter. So it was just that. And um, the only thing that it has different is that it has this very magical Stackbit YAML file. And this is where all the magic for Stackbit comes from. This. YAML file is how we uh, sort of tell Stackbit how our site works, which you know SSG it, it uses, uh, where the pages are stored. In this case, in the content directory, if we have assets, and this is a very very simple um, Stackbit YAML file. It can get very very complex. And let me actually open one for you i think i had um stack with names that's this is like a repository of all the things that they support so let me uh, open just any of them really and all of them they're just going to be regular websites and they're all going to have the stack with yaml file and for example this one is one of their supported themes so and as we saw they're very flexible so they have like a lot of things that they are pre-configuring pre here for configuring the, the sections and the field that each section has and the type of field and the label and everything here. So like seeing this and seeing, you know, uh, this one that it was the, the bare bones stack with YAML that I could create, you can see the potential of, you know, all of the things that I could continue adding to make my simple, um, you know, imported theme uh, or like custom theme, um, stack bit compatible if you want. And so um, this is really the the magic here. And there's they have um, really great information for getting up and running with this. Two things that I want to share with you here. There's a tutorial that they have in their uh, documentation uh, that it's gonna take you to the same steps that I did, which is just creating the starter and then adding the stack bit configuration, which is what we just saw. And then and then that's it. And then you push it and let's see if it finished um, sort of doing the thing. And and it did. So this is the starter right here. This this again was just a Gatsby blog starter, but it can be your existing website adding that stackbit file and making it work with you know uh stackbit uh, another piece of information that i want to share also in their docs they have the stackbit yaml documentation which is also very good but i also uh, recommend like going through their um their list of themes and seeing how they actually did it so you can maybe replicate that and they also have um an, a cli 
that lets you create this file and also validate it. So that's also like another option for that. Um, any questions so far about this option? Cool. Yes. Was there a question? Yeah, I had a quick question. Um, so yeah. when you're you're creating that manifest, like the, the YAML file there that ties everything together, um, how does that tie into like the live editing? Do you have to put anything in your templates to actually say that this is the field that corresponds to that thing in my manifest? Or how does it actually tie into that live preview where you're editing? Yes, you know? for example, let's let's see, let's see into this one, which is very simple. It's the Gatsby startup uh, blog. So if we look into this uh, and, and it has like a list of blog posts, right? And if we see each one of them has a title, like a date and a description. And if we open this one, uh, let me actually open it from here because I think I closed it. And if we open this that big YAML, you can see that we have we have only one model right here in this in this example. It's going to be the po the posts for the for the blog posts, and uh, we're going to specify that it's going to be the type page. And there are different types, but this particular one is going to be type page. Uh, we're going to say that the label is post, and that they're going to be stored in the blog, like the the uh, MD files and and all of the little folders that are going to be in the blog folder. You can specify a URL path, and then here's the the interesting part part for the fields. Uh, you can say, would well, you can specify each one of these is going to be a field that it's going to come from that uh, front matter from the the MDs here, and so you're going to say we're going to open one in a moment, but you're going to say the one of the fields is going to be of type string that the, the name is going to be title, and then the label is going to be title. And if you look into one of those, and let's actually go ahead and open it here so we, you can also see how this works uh, in the code editor thing. And one quick thing that I want to say, I'm using the free version, which uh, you know it, they let you have one account. I think that's unlimited websites, but just one uh, user. And the the sort of downside, it's great for experiments and, and that, but it's it's a little bit slower. When once you start paying, everything goes faster. Like you have like more fast uh, responses from the server and everything. Um, and so uh, let me show you the content. We have everything in the content folder, in the blog folder, and each one of these folders is a blog post. And let me open the markdown file. And so you can see up here, there's this title, date, and description, which are the fields that I specified in the Stackbit YAML here. And if you wanted to add one more, you can add one more here, uh, like as many as you want. Specify if you want it to be uh, text, if you want it to be an image field. Uh, there's like uh, a list of different file types that you can specify, not file type, field types that you can specify. And once uh, Stackbit picks up this YAML file, it'll make it uh, available for you uh, for for using, and it will pick it up um, and it'll sync it. If that makes sense. Any other questions? I hope that that answers your question. Yeah, Flora, I had a question too. So when you're generating a site using Stackbit and um, it's, it's creating the uh, environment uh, variables. Do you have to manually, like when you sync your GitHub, do you have to manually like create your .emb file to store them or does that automatically do that by default? That, that wasn't really clear, so I just want to understand better. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So um, as far as I understand and as what I've been seeing of, about using it, uh, this, uh, for example, this one is connected to Netlify. So you can specify your environment variables directly in Netlify, or you can also specify them here um, in environment variables right here. And so once you do so, it's going to you know provision them into into the environment for you. I don't think, and they shouldn't be uh, committed to the repo, so I don't think it does that. So you sort of need to specify them. Uh, either on Stackbit or on Netlify, or if you're using Vercel, 
in Brazil, but like like not in the in the GitHub repo. Does that does that make sense? Yeah, that clears up that question. Thank you for um, thank you for the answer. Sure. I was curious if you had mentioned that there were uh, starters for like Gatsby and Next, and if there were similar ones for like Vue or Svelte or other kind of non React frameworks. That's a great question. So not that I know. Um, maybe that we can ask. Um, we can I can answer that later for you. I can ask uh, the Stack Brief guys for sure. I know that they are working very hard on adding more things. Let me quickly open this so we can see this together. Um, I know you that they have. What's that? She get a plenty starter. Plenty is Jim's framework. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for the plug, uh, Anthony. Right? <laughs> Checks in the mail. You shouldn't get one. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, as far as I know, uh, it only works with next. Let's be next. Hugh and Jekyll so far, like at least out of the box. Uh, but I'm sure that they they are working on adding more because they are really working. Like every time that I open Stackbit after a month or so, there's a bunch of new things to see. So I bet that they are actively working on adding new things. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? Cool. So that was sort of like a like a um, short and sweet demo of what it does. I didn't want to, you know, I don't have a lot of time, so I couldn't dive into a lot of things. But I hope that this, you know, got you super curious about StackBit and sort of like the power of everything that it could do. There's a there's um, um YouTube uh, video uh, from Chris Coyer and Dan Barak, who's one of the co-founders. Uh, that if you are interested, I, 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 I'd love for you to take a look into that. It's like a, an hour or so video and they go into some of the things that I share and, but also like, uh, implementing the thing with a CMS, like a headless CMS approach. And I think that on that video, they really showed the power of, you know, um, how, that uh, bidirectional synchronization works, it, and it doesn't really matter if it's you know Git based or CM, headless CMS based. Um, so um, if you if you want to um, look for that video again, it's Chris Coyier and um, Dan Barak uh, talking about Stackbit, and I can share the link once I'm I'm done talking. Um, some of the things that I wanted to also mention is that so we looked into the live previews uh, feature and the inline editing. They also have um, on the on sort of like the main the paid plans uh, collaboration, so you can add more users, uh, and that's that's very interesting for you know teams and agencies and and that like I, I can tell you in my previous company I would have loved to have. Uh, something like Stackbit because we were migrating some WordPress sites into the Jamstack, and one of the things that was, you know, sort of like hard for everyone to to get on board was like, how do we edit this website now? And we were having them edit the thing directly in Contentful. We were using Contentful, uh, but it, you know, they were the, first. It was something that was different for them, and they weren't seeing, you know, the live preview thing and editing the thing right there. We, we put live preview uh, up for them, but it took, you know, how it takes some time to reveal everything and whatnot. So it, was, it wasn't the, the best experience. So I think that if we want to start having more, more uh, you know, um, businesses and agencies and, and websites being built with the Jamstack, we need to start taking care of this aspect of, you know, having uh, this editing experience uh, for non-technical people available, uh, but still having all the Jamstack features and, and all of the power uh, that we can have, you know, under the hood uh, still intact. So it's a uh, collaboration, it's very important. And they also, on the pay plans, they have uh, granular publishing. So they let you uh, just publish some pages instead of the whole thing. So that's something interesting to look into as well. They also provide provide A-B testing, which is another thing that in my previous company when we were doing this, it was 
sort of complicated. It was like, how do we do this? And they, it was a, a lead generation company. So they were really, you know, interested in having that AB, AB testing capability. Then roles and permissions, you can get your publishing and then you have multiple languages support. So it's really a tool that, you know, it's uh, it's really to keep an eye on because they're, they're truly uh, making something, something really cool. A few takeaways. Stackbit lets you get a Jamstack site up and running in minutes if you use one of their that their created um, supported themes. So you can uh, change it and make it work for you and have a super beautiful and fast and powerful and everything Jamstack website ready for you in a few minutes. And then you can also import your existing website into their live editor, like doing that Stackbit YAML thing that we talked about. Uh, then also pay plans provide more exciting tools for agencies and teams. And that lets us keep all the good things about the Jamstack and it adds the missing visual editing experience pretty much effortlessly, I would say. It's pretty amazing to see actually. And that was all. Thank you all. Thank you, Floor. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. That was great. Sure thing. Thanks. Um, so does anyone have any questions for Floor before I turn over the floor to um, Mark? I think, Mark, did you hop on the call? Hey, guys. Hey, Mark. How's everybody uh, doing? Good. How are you? Good, good. Hey, Mark. Hey. Um, so any, any questions? Any, I know we did some questions throughout the presentation. Did anyone else have any follow-up questions? If you do, if you, you know, keep thinking about it, you can hit me up on Twitter, TechFloor, or Instagram, also TechFloor. I'm always happy to help you uh, figure things out. OK. Well, thanks again. That was a great presentation. I, I learned a ton. Oh, nice. Thank you for hosting me, 